I'm Justin, and like many Gibraltarians, I grew up eating my granny's delicious food. The smells and flavours created in my family's kitchen inspired me to learn and discover more about the mouth-watering dishes that make us Gibraltarian. Hi guys, today I'm going to be cooking some dishes for you which I grew up with and it's something which I really enjoy. It's a minestra and I'm going to be making some calabacines rellenos on the side because those are some of my favourite little starters to enjoy when I go to my granny's house, when I go to parties. It's a healthy treat and it's a perfect Gibraltarian finger food. So today we're going to have a bit more of a vegetarian vibe to it. We're going to use lots of vegetables, everything's going to be fresh, colourful, those of healthy ingredients. <laughs> For me, there's nothing quite like minestra. The fresh vegetables, the pasta topped off with delicious Eden cheese makes for one of my favourite dishes. So the first thing you need to get is the colinavo, or it is also known as kohlrabi. It's a bit of an ugly little vegetable, but we're going to chop these up and we're going to cut off all these leaves. Just use this chunk here. So let's cut off all the leaves, all the stems from this side. We don't need that. Make sure you rinse out all your vegetables first because they've been growing out there and some of them might not be organic. There might be some pesticides on there, might be some insects. We don't want any of that dirt. So we're just going to wash it, make sure all the dirt's gone. Do the same for all your ingredients. Just chop them up and we're going to put them in a pot. I'm going to use a pot this big because this recipe is going to be for about four people. So between four and six people. Uh, so we're going to need a lot of space in there, especially when you fill it up with water, it's all going to rise. So we need to have a lot of space. So a deep pan is perfect for that. The next thing is aubergine. We need to cut the ends and then just slice them up again. And place them in your pan. We're going to use carrots, Courgettes, a uh, bit of basil, pumpkin, runner beans, and we're going to crush some garlic in there. We don't chop it this time, we just crush it. And finally, when all that's done and all that's boiled, we'll add the red kidney beans. But we don't need to add these just yet. Those go a bit later on once everything's done and once you blend everything, once it's all boiled. Now, what I really enjoy about this recipe is that every family tends to do it a bit differently. My family makes the, the minetta a bit thicker, but I've had it before in friends' houses, I've had it before at other events, and um, it can be more soupy, it can be a bit thinner, a bit creamier. For some reason, you know, like many Gibraltarian dishes, it varies really from family to family. We'll cut the, uh, let's say the skin off the pumpkin. Now it varies. If you want to add more pumpkin, your minetta is going to be a bit more orangey. If you want to add more uh, runner beans and uh, other ingredients to it, it'll be a bit greener. It really changes color depending on how much quantity of the other ingredients you use. So this is the second recipe that we're using with calabacines and I really like calabacines because they're very really sweet and uh, the inside you can boil them, they'll be soft, you can uh, fry them. Depending what you do with them, there's a bit of a different taste to it. We cut the ends off and we put these in there. The same with the runner beans, you can add whole really. You can just break them up in your hand and add them in there. Now this is why you need a big pan, because it's already near the top. And the basil, just break it. And it's really nice to rub in your hands and smell it, because the basil is so fresh. Love it. Especially a pasta dish. When you put a pasta dish with fresh basil, it just changes the whole, changes the whole taste of everything, changes the whole atmosphere of your dish. Because you can just smell, smell a bit of Italy in there. So once we add the basil in there, we'll just take this out the way for a moment, put this to the side. I'm going to crush our garlic. So we'll crush the garlic down and we'll place it in our pot. And one of the great things about the garlic, which I've realised, is that it's uh, a base of many of our dishes here. And uh, you, you know, you slice it up, you chop it up and fry it and use it as a refrito. Uh, but we're going to crush it up this time. And the great thing about the garlic, which I, which I really like, is that it's got so many healthy properties. It's got it's antibiotic, it's good for your circulation, which is why I think as well that the minestra is a perfect dish. There's so many healthy vegetables and everything's so fresh that it's perfect for kids because it's full of vitamins, it's full of minerals, 
it's ideal for family servings when you're growing up with a busy family you can just make it serve it a couple days leave it there for a few days put it in the fridge perfect lunchtime meals school kids you know everything's there okay so we fill this up it's all done it's perfect so all we need to do is fill it with water so we'll get our kettle which we put to boil before and just pour in the water until you cover everything make sure to <laughs> make sure to cover everything with water and uh, we'll take it to our hob and we'll put it there to heat we'll check on it after 10-15 minutes to check if it's uh, softened up and we'll we'll keep an eye on it so the minesta is bubbling away let's get on to the calabacines To begin, we need to just cut the ends of our courgettes and put them to boil. Boil your courgettes until they're tender, but don't boil for too long or they'll end up too soft. The galasinas are boiled, we'll just put them here to cool down a bit because they'll be really hot when you drain them. Once they've cooled down, we need to cut them lengthwise. Carefully because the skins are soft and we need to try and keep the skins whole. If we, if you boil them too long, they'll get too soft. Leave them just enough so that the inside is soft but the outside stays intact. And uh, we'll cut them lengthwise and what we need to do after this is scoop out the courgettes. But leaving enough thickness so that the skin keeps its shape. And that way when we put the filling in afterwards, we can just put it on top, flour it and fry it. So we'll scoop this out and then we'll put the filling in the middle sort of like a little boat and we'll cut them out and they should keep their shape so if you look closely so that sort of thickness is what we need to keep there they're very soft they'll be very delicate so i'm very watery as well so make sure if you can uh, get a dishcloth underneath or a large enough chopping board that's best because they will they will release a lot of water when you when you start to scoop them out I'll just scoop them all out, put them in a bowl, and then we'll move on to the next step. So we've scooped everything out, we've put it all in our bowl. If you look carefully, there'll be a lot of water in there, because this is a lot of water that the courgettes release. So we need to just squeeze this to the side, let all the water out and drain that down the sink, because we don't need to use that water. Otherwise, your courgettes are going to be too runny and your stuffing's going to be just mush. So we've drained our courgettes, and uh, now we need to make the stuffing. So we need 30 grams of breadcrumbs, which is about a handful, so we'll put that in there. We need 40 grams of cheese, two eggs, to mix in there. You know, preferably use free range eggs, parsley, a bunch of parsley, so just break that up. You can, you can cut it very finely. Can do everything but I like to keep it more fruity going you can just cut it up and chop it up in there and garlic okay and once that's in there we can use a spoon in our hands and just mix it all together if you see that it's a bit too runny you can add a bit more breadcrumbs in there because it might be a bit runny in there I can just sprinkle a bit more and I love cooking with my hands because I like feeling the food between my fingers and you know it's just you feel a bit more proud when you finish and everything is, it looks all nice, it looks, everything, everyone's enjoying it, that you've made it yourself. So the stuffing's ready, we'll need to stuff our courgettes now and then we'll slice. And once that's sliced into smaller pieces, we'll bread and put on a separate plate ready to fry. So just get a teaspoonful of your stuffing and spread it into your courgettes there. Spread it all the way around the middle so that it sits in the middle of the courgette and uh, the courgette keeps its shape there. That's what we're looking for. That sort of stuffing, everything's in there. In the middle, it's like a little boat. And uh, we'll cut it down. We'll cut it like this. You can leave them longer, you can keep them short. It really is up to you. If you want them smaller, more bite-sized. Or you can uh, keep it as a main meal. You can have one courgette, 
cut it in the middle, uh, serve it with some rice on the side, and that's a main course served, or you can keep it small and have it as bite-sized little starters. We'll place it in the middle of the flour. We'll just dust it over. And this way, everything stays together. Dusted it, and there you go. And that's one courgette ready. And now we'll do all the others, which we've got here. Just dust it over. You can place it in the middle and you know, throw your, your flour over, or you can do it like, yeah, I'm a bit more potato. And uh, once we're finished, we'll fry them. So let's move on. So while your oil is heating up, here's one extra tip. When you finish your courgettes, if you have any stuffing left over, you can make, uh, you know, little stuffing patties or courgette-free little fry-ups with the, with the stuffing. So you just flatten them, just pass it through flour first, the same as you do with the courgettes. So you do the same process and just fry it afterwards and you have a nice little extra there that you didn't expect, maybe. It's always nice. The calabacines are now ready to fry. We're going to heat up a pan with oil, which we have done already, with olive oil in there. When you see just before it starts to smoke, we're going to put in our calabacines to fry, until they're nice and golden, and then we're going to put them on a plate to drain with some kitchen paper underneath so that all the oil goes to the bottom and our calabacines don't end up too oily and wet. So, so use a pan with enough oil in there so that when you put the calabacines, it can cover everything. Add it carefully so you don't burn. It might splash, so be careful. Add about uh, three or four at a time, depending on, on the size of the calabacines you have in there. So leave it the bottom bit to cook for a moment, and then we'll flip them around. Once you've had them in there a few seconds, uh, maybe 30 seconds, half a minute or so, we'll just flip it over and cook the stuffing side. They cook quite quickly, just a couple of minutes should be enough for everything. We want to make sure that the stuffing is cooked in the middle, so we want to have it in the oil, first on one side so that it cooks the top bit, the bottom bit, the stuffing bit. And uh, once that's, you can see that it starts to go golden, flip it round so that the courgette side starts to fry and harden a bit more. And that way the middle will also start to cook. If you see that maybe when you flip it round, it's not gold enough, you can splash some oil over it and uh, just get it out, put it on the paper and it's all ready. Mm -hmm. 